Doctor, thanks for joining us. This is the Cancer Q&A. We're going to deal with the common misunderstandings and myths about cancer. First question, and it's a, I think it's a good one. How does cancer start? Is there some moment in time when a healthy cell becomes a cancerous cell and the process starts? Actually, yes. So our body is composed of trillions of cells. And uh, these cells, are uh, their job is to grow and produce a protein of some kind. As we are, when we're small, the cells grow faster because we have to grow in size. But as we get older, the cells stay the same but, and they slow down in, in uh, speed of growth. But, so these cells can, can make complete replication of themselves. Mm -hmm. And in that process, sometimes you uh, have a cell that has bad DNA. Somehow the DNA is damaged. And it has a series of checks and balances. Each cell has a series of checks and balances to make it go faster or slow down. And cancer is a process where either the accelerator is stuck or the brake is not working. And so these cells start producing a copy, an exact copy of themselves. And that is how uh, we diagnose cancer because they are exact copy, they're monoclonal, they're exact copy of a particular parent cell. What causes this to happen? What causes cancer, and wh why does it seem like it's become so common? Why do we hear so many people having cancer? So, uh, you know, we were talking about the brakes not working or the accelerator going, uh, mm -hmm. getting stuck. There are many things in, uh, the, in a cell that can go wrong. Signaling uh, pathways or the DNA itself um, being damaged can cause this uh, to, to occur. And that uh, damage to DNA can be caused by a lot of environmental things, tobacco smoke, radiation, exposure to chemicals such as benzene, et cetera. So there are a variety of, uh, of environmental factors that can trigger. Sometimes um, the, your own genetics can do that. And in most cases, we actually don't have a complete answer as to why a cell can be uh, damaged in such a way that to cause cancer. How and why does cancer spread, what we call metastasis? How does that happen? So uh, our, each cell in our body has instructions, the complete set of instructions to make a complete person. However, uh, portions of the cell are suppressed. For example, the liver cell only works as a, as a um, liver cell. Other parts of the DNA in the liver cell that could potentially make an eye or ear is actually suppressed. So cancer uh, cells are marked by where they begin. You know, if it's a liver cancer or a, or a kidney cancer or bladder cancer, et cetera. These cells, once they uh, start growing and the accelerator is stuck, they, are, they have no way of stopping themselves and they are looking for any place that they can plant and seed and start growing. So if there's a distant area that they spread through um, blood or a lymphatic system, and once they get to another place that may be conducive to starting, uh, you know, to replicating, they will set up shop there and you'll start having another tumor growing there. Now that's what we call a meta metastasis. So you can have a bladder cancer that metastasizes to the lung, or you can have lung cancer that metastasizes to liver or brain uh, through the blood or the lymphatic system. Let me ask you a follow-on to that. Are there certain cancers that are more metastatic and, some, and certain cancers that are less metastatic? Yes, different cancers have different propensities for different areas, usually because of the plumbing, the route at which it takes. You know, for example, rectal cancers, the uh, venous drainage from the rectal cancer can go to the uh, uh, liver. Colon cancer can go to the liver, so there's a higher propensity for colon cancer to go to the liver and the lungs. Um, and prostate cancer can do the same thing too, just because of the anatomy and the plumbing that's involved. Why are there so many different types of cancer and why haven't we found a cure yet? Uh, uh, so there are, are potentially as many cancers as there are the types of cells we have. In each organ we have multiple types of subtypes of cells. And uh, because of that, we probably have uh, in the neighborhood of 200, 250 uh, human cancers. And uh, the issue is in different cancers, or in the same cancer, you can have different areas of the particular infrastructure that's, uh, that's gone awry. Mm -hmm. You could have DNA problems, you could have uh, signaling problems, you could have protein issues, different issues uh, in, in the cancer that's driving it. 
And so curing one particular cancer, um, you know, you're only attacking one pathway. You may have multiple pathways involved. And that makes the, uh, you know, the number of cancers times the number of pathways that are involved with each cancer, it's a huge number. And so it's not as easy as you know, one particular thing that would uh, fix all. There's no one, one, fi one solution that fixes all of it. This may seem like a silly question, but uh, I hope it's not. Can injuries, for example, broken bones, falls, bruises, those kinds of traumas, can those turn into cancer? Uh, no. Uh, a simple fall or a simple cut or bruise cannot turn into cancer. Sometimes uh, repetitive injuries can. You know, if you are uh, injuring a certain place and the body has to repair it over and over again, there's a small, slight chance that, you know, as the body is doing that over and over again, some of it might go awry. Okay. But uh, the answer is no. It's injuries and, and um, small, the usual things that we face in life don't cause cancer. There's, there's a myth, or maybe it's not a myth, that stress causes cancer. To what degree is that true? There is no scientific uh, basis for that. Um, stress, hormones that are released, et cetera, do not change or alter the body's natural weight, puts it under stress, right. um, and uh, more intense uh, uh, scrutiny, perhaps, but there is no evidence that that actually increases cancer risk or causes cancer. Are there any types of cancers that are contagious, that can be transmitted? No. So again, going back to what the definition of cancer is, it's where your cell loses its control to either slow down its replication, its duplication, or uh, loses or increases its ability to, uh, to replicate. Mm -hmm. uh, that cancer is unique to you. You know, if your cell were to be moved to someone else, that person's immune system would take down your your cell. So typically, uh, cancer cells are not uh, communicable. You cannot transmit from one person to the other. Having said that, some of the agents that cause cancer, for example, um, the uh, viruses, you know, like uh, human papillomavirus, HPV, that's implicated, or that can cause oral cancers, cervical cancers, et cetera. Those agents are communicable, uh, transmitted sexually, et cetera. So the, the agents that cause cancer can be communicable. Is it possible for men to get breast cancer? Yes. Approximately 1% of all breast cancers are in men. And uh, with roughly the number of uh, new breast cancer cases in the country between 225 and 250,000, that's about 2,500 men nationally uh, and every year have breast cancer. You mentioned HPV, the human papillomavirus, implicated or causal in uh, cervical cancer. Are there, and there's a vaccine for HPV. Are there any other cancers for which there is a vaccine? Uh, not at this time, no, but the HPV vaccine is, uh, also protects you against oral cancers, which we have seen the incidence rising in the last decade. When somebody is diagnosed with cancer, given you know, particularly for, for people of a certain age, the, you know, we recall that the treatment could be just truly horrific. Is it universally true that the treatment for cancer is actually worse than the disease itself? I, I think that's, that's a myth as well. Um, there are intense treatments that we employ in certain cancers, especially when the goal is cure. So we will put you, you know, through a lot of uh, intense treatment uh, it's usually short term for potential cure at the end. But there aren't any uh, cancers that the, where the treatment is worse than the disease itself. It may not be so at the time when we're treating it, but if left alone, that cancer is mostly worse than the, whatever the treatment would be. Oh, well. Doctor, it's been fascinating. I learned a lot. Thank you very much. You're welcome.